I am glad to announce the beginning of the new tutorial series called Business Math and Statistics for Data Professional. This series will be very helpful if you are targeting data analyst, business analyst or a data scientist career. I myself worked in data industry for more than 12 years and one thing I realized is that 80% of your data work can be done by 20% math and statistics. See, if you look at math and statistics, it's a huge field. You don't need to know everything. You can just learn 20% of that and get 80% of your work done, especially if you're targeting data analyst or business analyst career. For data scientist career, you need to know a little more advanced math. Now, if you look at this diagram, here what I have shown is the intersection between business math and statistics and business logic. And by business logic, what I mean really is this. Let's say you're working as a data analyst or data scientist in Expedia or OEO rooms, which are hospitality domain companies, then you need to have some domain understanding. For example, how hotel bookings work, what is occupancy rate, what is booking capacity, all of that you need to know. And that falls under business logic. This is something that typically business managers would do but as a data professional you also need to have some understanding on the domain on the business side of the things then comes your mathematic and statistics skills now you can learn basic math and statistics such as some percentage variance standard deviation you know correlation mean mode median and these things should be sufficient and these two will combine to form something called business metrics or KPIs. By KPI, I mean key performance indicator. When you're looking at any business, key performance indicators are revenue, profit. You know, if you're looking at Apple, how many iPhone they sold last year? What are my top five products? Who are my top five customers if you are in a service industry? So these are all called KPIs or business metrics. And it is an intersection of business math statistics and business logic. Now, if you add a third dimension to it, which is a tool skills, because see, to do data analysis, right, business logic and business math is not enough. You need to know some tools such as Excel, Python, R, Power BI. And the intersection of this is basically your data analysis. In order to do data analysis, you need some tool which could be Excel, Python, etc. But just by learning tool skill, you're not going to do data analysis. This is the classical mistake that people do. When I'm talking to any uh, data aspirant, I ask this question in last one month, how much time you have spent in business logic or core skills such as communication, presentation? And usually the answer is close to zero. People focus so much on tool but this diagram will make you realize the real data analysis can happen if you have the right combination of these three skills. And in this video series, in this tutorial series, you will find a playlist link in the video description below. I am going to be teaching you all these three skills using very, very simple examples so that even a dumb person should be able to understand these things easily. As far as the tool is concerned, we are going to use Microsoft Excel because that is the number one tool uh, that people use when they are performing data analysis, especially on smaller data set. So believe it or not, Microsoft Excel is still very, very widely used. And that is the reason I have created Microsoft Excel course, which will be available on my website codebasics.io in March 2023. So check the description below. Uh, you might find a course link there once it is launched and that course will contain a lot of premium uh, material uh, but I have taken some of the material from that course and designed this entire playlist. So this playlist will have let's say 10% or 5% of the content from my premium Excel course. Okay, now since we are using Excel as a tool skill uh, in the next video, we are going to look at some Excel basics. You might know some Excel already, but I'm just going to quickly cover some of the very, very basic things in Excel and few advanced things as well. And then we will start performing uh, some business related data analysis. 
in the last video we said that as a tool we will be using microsoft excel for this entire series therefore i am going to be covering some excel basics in this video i have windows machine where i have excel installed already so i'm going to launch that application directly if you don't have microsoft excel installed you can install it it's a paid software if you are a student they give some uh, discount if your college has association with microsoft uh, you can also use the online version of microsoft excel where the excel will run in the browser and that should work okay but i will leave it up to you on how you want to install excel let's say you have it installed when you launch it uh, let me go over this uh, the tool and the anatomy of the application so at the top you see this menu bar where you see variety of options. here what you are seeing is the spreadsheet okay and spreadsheet has rows and columns so one two three these are row numbers a b c these are columns and at the bottom you have sheet so you can have multiple sheets by the way okay so let's say you are trying to maintain your monthly home expenses in the excel file that's a very very first basic use case you should learn whenever you are learning excel and let's say i am maintaining those expenses month by month so i will say may 2023 june 2023 for each month you can create a separate tab uh, when we started my company atlic technologies which is a software development company we used to maintain all the expenses in this kind of sheet you know month to month expenses for the company uh, and here you can type in your expenses so you can say okay first may on may i spent on home rent i spent let's say 500 dollars okay so this home rent is let's say I, an item and this is an amount this is the category because you're, you're going to categorize your expenses like rent and food and utilities and so on and date and in excel you can drag and drop so when you drag and drop excel is smarter and it will figure out that this is a date so it will increase the date okay uh, but let's say uh, for first may itself i have a few expenses so let's say i have five expenses for first may and those expenses I'm going to just copy paste to save my time. So for copy paste, you can say control C, control V. I'm going to provide this Excel file. Check the video description down below. Um, then you can have, okay, let's say this is my second May. For second May, I have once again, four expenses and third May I have one expense, okay? So I have this uh, other sheet and I'm just going to copy paste data so that it saves time on recording. Okay, you love samosa, so there is a Chotumal samosa shop nearby your home. There is a Tondumal Pani Puri, so you are eating all of that and um, you are maintaining all your expenses here. Okay, it is a common practice that the header you want to highlight in a special color so that you know it is a header. And then if you use B, it will make it bold. So now my expense sheet looks little prettier, all right? You can also use conditional formatting where let's say if the expense is more than hundred dollar you want to highlight it okay so let's uh, do this you can select this column and you can say highlight greater than so if this is greater than let's say hundred dollar then i want to highlight it so now what happens is whenever your expense is more than some amount it will highlight it this kind of highlighting helps um, as I said, I have worked in an uh, industry for many years and when I used to deal with this big Excel files, especially at my stay at Bloomberg in New York office, we used to get huge Excel files and if you have this kind of conditional formatting, that will always help. You have some data point which are extreme or which are, which are creating some kind of trigger, you can highlight those with certain numbers so that you can quickly look at them and do your analysis. Okay, now let me show you some basic formulas in excel okay so let's say you have all these expenses uh, naturally the first operation you might want to do is you want to know your total expense how much i spent in total in month of may you can do that by just highlighting left mouse click click here and at the bottom it will show you the sum 10 10 or 
you can type in a formula and for formula what you need to do is you you can just say is equal to sum so sum is the formula so it is showing you in autocomplete you open a bracket and then left mouse click you highlight all this cell you can type this thing manually also d2 colon d11 bracket close and that shows you a sum okay so this is my total you can control scroll down to reduce the font size or you can reduce the fonts this is the not the font size this is really the view okay you can reduce font size from here um you can also do auto sum by using this particular this particular option okay you can also sort the numbers by clicking any number here and you can here say sort let's say smallest to largest and see it will sort it like that but if you want to sort by dates you click here and once again you can say newest to oldest or oldest to newest and it will sort things like that all right now each uh, block the square that you are seeing is called cell so this thing is a cell this thing is a cell this whole thing is a spreadsheet uh, and you can call it spreadsheet or sheet so sheet one sheet two you can rename it and this whole thing the whole pile that you're seeing is called workbook so the file you can save by saying this save okay so you can save to let's say this pc i want to save it on desktop i want to call it expenses expenses okay so expenses dot xlsx is the extension for excel file now uh when you have numbers you can do formatting let's say this amount is in dollars so if you click on it see it will show it as a dollar percentage also you can do uh, but i don't want to uh, have any formatting here so i just say general which is no formatting one other operation you might be interested in doing is you have these categories i want to know the total expense per category on food in the month of may how much money i spent on utilities how much money i spent so you can here create another kind of a table where you will say category and total in category you have food utilities etc now if you don't want to write all of this you can use unique formula so you can say equal to unique and in the unique so see food utilities rent and if you want to sum them see i can use sum I can use sum correct but that's the total sum i want to sum only food items for that there is a function called sum if so in sum if you will specify on which category you want to do that grouping so you first specify the category column then you want to say i want to filter only food okay food comma how do you want to sum so this is my sum range so in this range i want to sum them up so when you do this you get 190 so that is your total food expense you can control c control v here see by default it will change uh, this thing so you can fix it b2 to b12 or b11 rather okay and d2 to d11 so utility this much expense and sum if once again this not this actually this comma this and this is the range okay if you want to verify that this total is correct or not you can do it using a filter so you can go to data click on filter now it's filtering per category so see for food on the right hand side you see 190 so i will say food okay food i have this much you click on it and at the bottom you see 190 so that 190 is verified similarly if you do utilities for example you see see here the you see 320 so when you click and remove it utility you see 320 so things are correct okay now these are just uh, general cells uh, in the excel file there's something called table 2 and table will allow you to do some advanced things so here whatever i have created it looks like a table but see 
the table is pretty big, right? It's a whole sheet. And in that, you have a bunch of numbers and text here. But if you want a proper table, you can select this and you can say insert table and just say okay. Now what happened is this thing become a table. So when you highlight your mouse cursor here, say at the top you don't see table design option. But when you're here, you will see this extra option called table design. And when you click on it, you can name the table. So I'm going to say name of this table is expenses. And how does naming the table help? Well, now when you want to sum things up, you don't need to say sum D2 to D11 because that's cryptic and you know, tomorrow I enter a new row, I have to modify the formula and all that. Now I can do something like expenses, see? Because expenses is my table. And when you put this bracket, it will also show you the column name. And you can hit tab, bracket closed, now expenses. Now see, this is much more readable than just saying amount or just saying D2 to D12. What does it mean D2 to D12? It's just random cells. But here, there is a table name expenses and there is a column name amount. So this looks much more readable. Also the other benefit is, let me just put it here, control X, control V. Whenever you're adding a new row, for example, here, let's say you right click and you say insert rows below. And let's say on third May, you incurred another food expense. Let's say Chedi Lal Rajma Rice or Chedi Lal Dal Rice. Okay. Dal rice is my favorite food, by the way. Um, and I don't like all this pizza and burger and all that. I like to eat our Indian traditional food. Anyways, when I inserted this new row, it became part of the table. See, the, it is highlighted. So it became part of the table. Not only that, the, the formula got modified. The formula is now taking that into account. Formula is same, by the way. But since the new row is part of the table, it came here automatically. So that's another benefit. One more benefit is you select the table and you can just say insert slicer. And you can say, let's say you want to do category wise breakdown. So you can just say category here and this slicer will allow you to filter. So I want to now see only food items, only rent, only utilities, see? So you get all of these <clears throat> useful features if your cells are table if if you have see general this is not a table but if you have just if you click it see there is no table design but if i click here there is a table design you can insert slicer you can do so many things you can by the way insert total row as well so you don't need to even even type this in you have a total row by default you can set total sum average count let's say i want to know count how many items are there 11 okay uh, I want some here. There are many more functions. You can do min, max, all basic arithmetic. So these are the benefits of the table. Now that you've understood Excel basics, uh, let me introduce movies data set. And this is the data set we'll be using in many of the future videos in this playlist. That's why I want to just give you a broad introduction on this particular data set. Here you see multiple sheets, okay? So first one is movies where we have movie name, which industry, Bollywood or Hollywood, uh, their studio, IMDb rating, budget, revenue, etc. And in the second one, you have financials. So by the way, financials, I have used some formulas and I have merged this table into here. Okay, you can see that we have used XLOOKUP. And then you have actors table. Let me delete all these extra things. Uh, movie actor, languages, and so on. So movies has movie ID, okay? And that movie ID you can use to link with the financial table. So let's say this KGF chapter two, it is 101. So it is 101. The budget and revenue was one and 12.5 billions INR. So we used 101 movie ID to pull this revenue and 
currency. I'm not gonna go in X lookup formula, but X lookup formula is something that you use to combine these two tables. Uh, the information on this X lookup formula and all those details are available in my uh, Excel course. Uh, in terms of languages, see movies have a language ID. Let's say three, KGF chapter two is three. So what is that three language? Kannada. Okay, so that's a simple table. Then you have movie actor. So 101 is KGF2. The movie actors are 50 and 51. So what is 50 and 51? 50 is Yas and Sanjay Dutt. So if you have seen KGF2 movie, you know Yas and Sanjay Dutt are the actors. Okay, so these are the things we have. Let me delete it. This is an extra thing, so we don't need it here. So these are the tables that we have. Now in the future videos, we will be performing some data analysis on on this particular uh, data set as well as we'll be using some other data sets too. All right, so keep on watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends who want to uh, get into data industry. On this movie's data set, now let's perform the basic business arithmetic. Here, when you're looking at the number, obvious question that you have is what is my total budget or what is my total revenue? And you can do that easily by doing sum of movies and let's say budget. And that is a total sum. But is this number correct? Well, it is not because these numbers are either in billions or millions and their currency is also different. So you can't add numbers if they are on a different basis altogether. So you have to standardize them to a common currency and a common unit. Then only you can sum them up. So let's do that process right now. So I'm going to delete this because this number is anyway wrong. I will do control scroll down so that the font size reduces. And then I will create, I will drag this and I will create, okay, control C, control Z. I will create two new columns. So I will call this budget in millions. So first I want to create a column where all numbers are in billions. And why do I do that? Because when I look at this unit, I have either billions or millions. So I can easily convert billions into millions and get all numbers in a single unit, which is millions. And I will do the same thing for revenue. So I will say revenue, million, enter. Okay. Now, how do you convert billions into millions? So one billion is thousand million. So what you have to do here is use if formula and you can say if my unit is in billions. So if this is in billions, then multiply the budget number with thousand. Okay. Otherwise, whatever number is there, just keep it. So now you see that I'll just do control scroll to increase the font size. Now you can see that the 1 billion number is converted to 1000, but 200 million number remained as is. So you can say that all these numbers are now in common unit, which is millions. And you can do the same thing for revenue. So here I'll say once again, if the unit is billions, then revenue multiplied by 1000 else revenue. Bracket close complete. 12.5 is converted to 12,500, which is good, but the 954 million dollars is as it is, it did not change, which is good. Okay, now let's convert these numbers into common currency. So I'm going to use INR. So I will have budget million INRs, but I'm feeling lazy, so I will not write million. Just understand that this is million. So this will be budget INR, revenue INR. And let's convert this number into INR. So if it is INR already, you don't need to do anything. But if it is USD, then you need to 
multiply this number with USD to INI conversion rate, right? So let's do that. So if my currency is USD, then multiply this number with 80. 80 is the current USD to INR rate. It keeps on changing, but I'm just going to estimate it to be 80. Otherwise, keep the budget in millions. Okay. And do the same thing for this one as well. So if my currency is equal to USD, then multiply this number by 80, else keep this number done. Okay. And you see that uh, this is the number for KGF 112,500. It remains same because we are in INR. But this number, since it was in USD, we multiplied by 80. So 200 into 80 is 16,000. And we did the same thing here. Okay. Now, if you want to get the total budget and revenue in a single currency, here you can do that. So here, you can just sum this entire, this entire, okay. I'm just gonna do it some movies budget INR budget INR bracket was missing some movies revenue INR you see it's so easy actually so these are INR numbers, so you can go here and you can select the INR currency. So you can go to more accounting format, scroll down, scroll down. And whenever you see INR symbol, see English India. So these are all INR numbers. And what is this exactly? So let me just control X, control V. This number is budget INR. Okay, so budget. INR total budget. You can highlight these cells as well in a special color. And this is total revenue in INR. And these are million. So this many million INR. It's a big number. But yeah, all these movies are doing so much business nowadays. KGF, RRR, if you're watching Bollywood movies, you know, they, they make so much money. And, and by the way, this is all, okay? So this is Hollywood and Bollywood both. So we, we can understand movie industry right now, they make a lot of money. And if you want to do the same thing for, let's say USD. So I'll say budget USD, revenue USD. So what is budget USD? So here you will say, if the unit or the currency is in INR, if the currency is in INR, then you want to divide that number. So you want to divide this number by 80. Once again, 80 is an average. When I was at Bloomberg also, uh, you know, when I worked at Bloomberg, New York office, uh, we used to have these kind of issues with currency. And many times we'll use the average of, of a quarter. Let's say you are looking at earning estimates of any company and you have two cells which are in different currency, uh, you will take an average. And sometimes the brokers will provide the currency spot rate conversion rate for average, like average, let's say average of last three months or average of last whatever time period. And they will provide that. Uh, if you want, or something real time, you can call an API through Excel and get the real time spot rate. Spot rate is nothing but a currency conversion rate. Okay. So you do that. Back it, complete. And then once again, if your currency is INR, then revenue divided by 80 else that and you can do quick verification so here budget in usd so budget million was this much so this divided by eight will be this number and but for this number 
since it is in USD already, uh, you kept the number same. All right. And here, you can just sum it up. Let's see if this formula is going to work. Yes, it is working. Okay, so you got all these numbers. Now let's do some other type of analysis. So what are my total number of movies? So I will say my total number of movies is equal to count. Count of all the movies. So you can take any, any column actually, but I'm just gonna take movie ID. Okay. And so my total number of movies is 39. Okay. And what are my Bollywood movies? Let's say I want to do uh, some analysis on Bollywood movies, such as what is my average Bollywood movie revenue? Okay, so let's do that. So first you need to count total Bollywood movies. So total number of Bollywood movies are count of movies. But if you do count, it it's not going to work because you want to do if. So there is a thing called count if where you specify the movie because you want to just you know if you specify the column on which you want to apply criteria and your criteria is I want to count only Bollywood movies which is 18 and what is total Bollywood movie revenue in INR we can do INR USD, but since it's Bollywood, we'll do Bollywood movie revenue. So what is my Bollywood re movie revenue? Obviously you have to use some if. See here, whatever you calculate in the yellow cell, that was total, all the movies, Bollywood, Hollywood. Here, I want to only count um, for the Bollywood movies. So some if, what is my range? So my range is industry, okay? On the industry, you want to apply Bollywood criteria. So in the industry column, it will filter based on Bollywood text. And then you want to sum. How do you want to sum? So in the movies, you want to calculate the revenue. So whatever revenue INR you have, you want to sum that up. Okay. So this is my total Bollywood revenue. Okay. And what is my average Bollywood revenue? Average Bollywood revenue in INR once again this is million INR all right folks that is understood that is simple average between this number and that number and you can okay now one question that you might have is we said 18 but out of 18 movies there was I think a movie which which did not have any data not available correct I think it was Shole. see Shole movie is not available so actually you should be dividing it by 17 because for one movie data is not available but it, it actually depends on the situation you may think 17 is the right answer so average will come out to be little less but i think it's okay just to keep things simple will not bother about it otherwise you can handle that na value uh, you can either delete that data point you can put mean or median uh, depends. So you have to discuss with your business manager and come up with the conclusion. But we want to keep things simple. So I'm gonna just uh, just say, okay, this is the total number. And you can say average Bollywood revenue percentage. What is my percentage average Bollywood revenue? That would be okay. So you have to say total Bollywood revenue divide by total revenue from all the movies and if you can take percentage five percent okay it is quite less here so this number is uh, basically your percentage Bollywood revenue percentage revenue from Bollywood with respect to all the movies and this is five percent because first of all our data set is not complete we don't have all the movies it's just a small sample and the second thing is you know this hollywood movies let's say if i'm watching the hollywood movie in us usually it earns more money because it's dollar and dollar gets converted to 80 so naturally hollywood movies make more money all right that's all we had for this video in the next video we are going to cover basics of profit and loss statement
we are going to discuss some of the important business metrics in this video and we will use Marvel Studios as our case study. You all probably watch Marvel movies. They are into this business of making movies and it's a business so they will have their own profit and loss statement and when I say profit and loss statement what it means is uh, they have to spend certain amount of money to make these movies which is called movie budget then they release the movies obviously you go watch movies and it will generate uh, revenues for the business so that is called revenue so there is a revenue then there is a cost which is your budget and if you subtract uh, the expense from revenue what you get is profit so that's a basic uh, definition of profit and loss if expense is more than revenue then you get loss uh, if it is less you get profit so if you google marvel profit and loss statement you will find various websites where you will see a complete statement here and here what this says is 66.53 uh, was their total revenue this is probably either million or billion dollars and uh, this uh, is the you know March 10 as of 12 month time period so that's like the duration uh, then you have expenses so from revenue you will subtract all the expenses see cost of material consumed financial cost uh, etc and this is your total expense and since the expense is more than your revenue, you will have loss. So see minus 16 and then there will be taxes and after you uh, deduct taxes, you will get net profit. So that's a detailed uh, statement. But what we are going to do is use a very, very simple statement. So we already have the movies data set with us. OK, so let's let's open that here. And in this, we have the information on Marvel movies here. See Marvel Studios. So if you filter things by Marvel Studios, you will get all the Marvel movies. And we are going to create this Marvel financials where we will have Marvel's revenue, then budget, profit and loss, profit and loss in percentage and so on. So we are going to uh, create all those metrics here. Okay, so let's pull Marvel's revenue. So obviously you can use some formula and in some you can go to movies table and if you do revenue USD, you get total revenue. So this is a total revenue which includes movies which are not from Marvel as well. But you want to include only Marvel movies. So we have looked at this before. You need to use some if formula where you're saying if the movie studio is Marvel, then only some uh, the revenue. So here first you are specifying a range. So you can go to movies and you can specify this range because uh, OK, I think studio because you are filtering based on the studio. So in sum, if the first column is the column on which you're filtering. OK, so that is your studio. And what is a filter criteria? Marvel Studios. See Marvel Studio. You see Marvel Studios here. So that's your filter criteria. And after you have filtered, what do you want to sum on? Well, you want to make a summation on this thing, which is revenue USD. So you're going to select that. OK. And finish that. And that's your total millions of dollar. OK, so this is nine billion dollar in total. That's your Marvel's revenue. If you want to verify anything, you can go to studio here and just filter things out. OK, so I'm just going to select Marvel here. And I get some eight movies. And if you just, you know, select these numbers, you will get 9054, which means our number is correct. See 9054. Now you can do the same thing with budget too. So I'll do control C, control V. And here, instead of revenue USD, I will pass budget USD. OK, so you get this. Now, folks, uh, just be careful when you are doing these formulas. See, right now I'm supplying movies revenue USD. Uh, if see in the last one, I selected. OK, let me just first clear that filter. Because if you remember, we have a filter on the studio. So I'm just going to 
clear that and then go back to this one and look at the third column see here when you select this you get movies revenue usd but if you select the whole whole column including header you get movies all revenue usd in that case you can get a wrong number see 6187 i actually don't know why this is happening but i have seen this wacky behavior with excel uh, so make sure you are consistent if you have all here and all here it will work okay but you need to be consistent in terms of range and some range so i'm just going to delete it and just select see, select from the first data row don't go from here otherwise it will include header as well so select from first data row go all the way hit enter and then it works okay okay so my what is my profit profit is simple it is revenue minus budget <laughs> that's business profit if my budget was more than revenue then i would end up in a loss and in the financial statements they just say profit slash loss and whenever the number is negative it is common understanding that that means it is a loss okay now what is percentage profit loss well this number is on which baseline should i use revenue as my baseline or budget as my baseline well it's it's budget so it's like you are a marvel movie producer you spend 100 million so that is your budget and let's say if you made a profit of 50 million dollar that's your 50 percent profit but that is always calculated with respect to budget therefore i will say this divide by this because that is your budget and if you convert this to a percentage which i can do by clicking here you get amazing 355 percent profit and this is based on the limited data that we have uh, this is not the real marvel profit yeah, okay this is based on our data set if you want to look at real uh, pnl statement for marvel you can google and, and find it out okay so that's my profit now i want to know market share so what is market share so market share is basically if total hollywood movies revenue is let's say 100 million and marvel is 20 million out of it then marvel's share is 20 percent it's like a pie chart in this pie how much uh, is the revenue from marvel okay so in order to calculate market share you need to first calculate total revenue of all hollywood movies okay and that you can calculate using sum if function once again so i can say sum if i don't need to even now look at the movies table because you know i know that it's, it's called movies and when you are saying hollywood you are, you are basically referring to the industry column so in the industry column give me all the records which has hollywood in it and then sum the revenue so revenue is present in which column this one correct so this is total hollywood revenue i should say total hollywood revenue and my market share would be what is my marvel's total revenue marvel's total revenue is this and what is total hollywood revenue it is this and if you convert that to a percentage it is close to 49 i mean you can increase the decimal and you get the better number but uh, it's okay i don't want to have any decimal so total market share of marvel in our data set okay not in reality in our data set is 49 percent which means 49 percent of the revenue generated by total hollywood industry is coming from marvel 49 percent of that total is coming from marvel okay i hope folks just think about it this is common sense so you should be i think able to get this pretty easily so we can generate this inside that marvel is almost half of the hollywood revenue i know in reality it is not but based on this data set see you are generating this this so this kind of uh, insights where you need to learn how we can talk in business terms as a data analyst or as an excel analyst when you're working with other other business stakeholders 
or don't use this number that okay marvel's revenue is 35% you can say marvel's revenue is almost one third of the total hollywood industry or here marvel's revenue is almost half of what is generated by the entire hollywood industry so when you are using this kind of business language you can do effective communication so that's very important learning business communication where you put all your technical uh, your code monkey behind that's very important skill to have in terms of market share i can go to google and say india's reliance jio versus airtel market share so in in india there are these wireless companies Rangio, Airtel, and so on, and see you see this nice picture. So if you open this picture, if you say right click, open image, a new tab, see this shows the market share. So when they say Reliance Jio is fifty three point ninety two percent market share, now you get it. So you have to take a revenue from Reliance Jio, divide that by total wireless industry revenue in India, and that that's when you get fifty three percent. Airtel is twenty six percent. which means if total wireless industry in india is generating 100 rupees revenue 26 rupees revenue is going to airtel and 53.92 rupees revenue is going to reliance jio you can you can do similar analysis on uh, you know zomato and swiggy market share these are like uh, food delivery services in india and you will see various charts for example look at this one open image in new tab here it says 80% of online food delivery market in india is covered by zomato and swiggy combined 12% is uber eat and 8% is others market share is something which is very important concept and when you go for interviews for data jobs they can ask these kind of questions so uh, it's it's an important concept to learn okay now in every business there are always targets okay so let me talk about target so if you're looking at you know any financial statement or any if you're doing any studies when i was at bloomberg in bloomberg uh i i used to work in earning estimates team where every company would have their earning estimates and when the actual numbers come they will be different earning estimate is basically your target so let's say you're trying to hit 100 million revenue but actually you hit in reality you get only 80 million revenue which means you are 20 million dollar behind behind the target okay so let's say for my marvel someone set a target of 8000 and by the way i'm just going to convert this into just i'll put the dollar sign so that it's very clear and you know what i can i think i don't need to have to have all over revenue here i'll just say control c and here i will use that formula that way it is more compact so let me just delete this row okay and all these three rows also i want it to be in dollar And let's say my budget was two thousand, okay. And my profit goal out of my two thousand budget was let's say six thousand, okay. And my profit percentage was obviously this divided by this percentage, okay. and let's say i wanted to capture a total of 55% market share let's say if that was my goal okay so i can say 55% here so this is the target which is set by business in the beginning of the year before the business cycle starts they will say hey So year has started these are my targets okay in my own company right now i'm sitting in uh my own software company at lick technologies and we have business targets and when the year finishes we try to compare the targets with the actuals okay so here you will say target minus actuals so what is actuals actuals is this number the reality and target is whatever target you set at the beginning 
So target was this. In reality, you got this. Target was this. Actually, you know what? In reality, you hit this and this is my target. So you achieved uh, 1000 million dollar above your target. That's what this means. Okay, so your budget was this and your actual profit is this and your target was this. So you achieved once again 1000 million dollar extra. I can just change it so that these numbers are different. Okay, and percentage wise, you achieved 80% more. Okay, because that is your profit. But market share wise, um, you achieved 6% less. So your goal was to uh, get 55% of the entire market, but you got actually 49. So it is 6% less, but in terms of profit, you achieved 80% more profit. Okay. In terms of budget, your budget was actually, you know, this, this particular number should be because this is an expense. We need to reverse it. So I expected I would spend 2000, but actually I spent $11 million less. So actually it's this positive thing. I, I, I spent less money. Okay, uh, or I mean, it depends how you are interpreting it, by the way. You can also do this one as well. See, whenever number is in bracket, um, it means it's negative. So in any financial statement, uh, whenever you see any number in a bracket, that is negative. You know, that is just a general accounting uh, convention when it comes to companies financial statements. So you have to remember that. So here, uh, this, this factor target minus actual, it actually shows how you perform overall. And sometimes, you know, the bonuses that people receive bonuses that sales managers and engineering and marketing team receives are actually based on this number. You know, are you achieving your targets? If you're achieving your targets, how much above you are your target? Let's say I went. 1 billion above my target, which means they did good. So they will Marvel Studios will distribute extra bonus to their employees, actors and so on. But let's say if they did badly and if this number was negative, then they will do evolution. You know, they will ask questions. Why this happened? Our business did not meet the target. What can we do better? And so on. You can put this into percentage. And what this means is the difference that you got on your baseline revenue number is let's say 11%, 12%, you know, so you got 12% surprise basically. Uh, so that's, that's a way uh, to look at it. Uh, when I was at Bloomberg, when companies meet or beat estimate, there will be this surprise number. Surprise means how by percentage, how much you're above. So let's say if company's revenue target was hundred million dollars, but they achieved 120. Uh, they're like 20% above the target. So that would be, that will be the surprise factor and the stock prices will move uh, based on that number. Okay. So this was a very, very simple, basic PNS statement in the future videos. We are going to look at much more detailed and advanced statement. Now, many times what happens is you want to do conditional formatting and whenever any of your target is, let's say, uh, less than 10%, you want to highlight that. So you can just say conditional formatting and you can say if this number is less than minus 10, then highlight it. Okay. So if it is less than minus 10 percentage, then highlighting. So then you know on which metric you are doing horrible. It's like your threshold. It shouldn't go beyond this threshold. So in terms of market share, you were 13% less than what you uh, actually set as your goal. So in Excel files, um, I'm pretty sure when sales and marketing department in big companies, they sit together, they, they would have these kind of Excel files where they're reviewing their targets 
and they would have this conditional formatting and they would be reviewing those uh, you know red highlighted cells carefully all right that's all i had uh, for this lecture in the next lecture we are going to look at the basic statistics now we will talk about basic statistics especially mean median mode remember that you can do 80% of your data analysis work using 20% basic statistics so you don't have to know advanced topics such as hypothesis testing uh, chi square test all of those things are needed if you're targeting data scientist career but if you're targeting data analyst or excel analyst career knowing just basic statistics is good enough it will get 80 percent of your work done so let's talk about mean and median first i will use an example let's say you want to open luxurious car showroom in your town now before opening a store what kind of analysis will you do well you will go to town you will try to measure income level of people and if people are earning a lot of money then only you can afford to have luxurious car showrooms such as mercedes or bmw so doing income analysis is a usual industry use case when you're opening a new store and let's say in my town there are these people let's say six people are living their monthly income is these many dollars you can take a simple average average you know right it's just a sum of all these numbers divide by the total count so here i summed all these numbers divided by six so total number of records are six and that is your average and average and mean are same thing okay so here the mean value is six to five zero and you will realize that this income is not huge enough that people will be able to afford a luxurious car so you will not open the showroom so this is called descriptive analytics now what may happen is in your town there could be one very rich person let's say elon musk is living in your town let's say he's your neighbor well he earns freaking 10 million dollar a month actually he earns probably more but just giving the example in that case whenever you have extreme values like this the average will not represent the true picture because due to the presence of extreme values which are also known as outliers by the way here elon musk is an outlier because other people's income levels are 5000 6000 maximum 8000 this guy is earning 10 million dollar it's like too high so whenever you have extreme data points uh, using average can be risky so what do you do then well just think about it uh, one approach you can do is sort the numbers okay so from less number to more in ascending order and try to take the middle point so middle point is 7000 and that middle point is nothing but median folks so you can use median number uh, to make your decision so once again i found seven thousand dollar it is not a very high income so i will not open my luxurious uh, showroom car showroom here the number of data points are odd that's why middle number is easy what if i have even number of data points i have total eight data points now well then also it's easy so you draw a middle line here then you take those two values you you basically have two values in the middle and you just average it out so average of seven thousand and eight thousand is seven thousand five hundred and that is your median so see median is very easy if you have odd number of data points it's a middle number if you have even number of data points you take an average of two middle numbers now let's look at mode so what is mode okay when you want to go to a restaurant with your friends what do you do you will do a survey you will ask okay do you want to eat south indian do you want to eat chinese do you want to eat italian and you take a uh, sort of like a survey okay you ask all your friends where do they want to go and then whatever is the maximum count you go with that so here see three people want to go to mexican mexican restaurant so that will be the decision and that is your mode mode is nothing but a frequently occurring value in a data set see mode is just a some kind of jargon 
you take any data set and whatever value is uh, occurring most number of times that is your mode they use mode in in a way in a voting also right if three candidates are in election then you do voting whoever gets the maximum votes uh, they get elected so that is your mode all right now let's look at our data set and try to use all of this in our uh, excel file so i have this excel file and i have this imdb rating which is the rating of all the movies and i want to now create a new sheet here okay so that's your new sheet fine and in this new sheet i can have mean median and mode and mean for mean the function that you use is average so you use average the name of my movies table is movies and that i am deviating so my average IMDb rating is 7.94. You can use this percentage here. Similarly, median, there is a function median. Once again, movies is my table name. And then IMDb rating. So my median is 8.1, which means if I take all the ratings and kind of arrange them in ascending order, in the middle you will find 8.1. And then mod is once again I will do movies and DB rating. So 8.4 is the most frequently occurring rating. So you can go to movies data set, you click here and you can sort these values. Uh, let's say smallest to largest. You get all these values and you'll realize 8.4 is appearing four times say 8.5 is two times 8.6 so that is your mode mod <laughs> not mode mod okay so mean median mod we just cover basics these are a very very easy concept folks so i hope it is clear in the next video we are going to cover few more uh, statistics concepts In this video, we will understand variance and standard deviation using a very simple example. The definition of variance is it measures how far each number is from each other in a given data set. Let me give you a simple example of two countries. These are imaginary countries, Uganda and Kranz. And you are doing study on the income level of people in these two countries. Usually countries have per capita income level, which is an average income of a person in a given country. And if that per capita income is higher, it means countries economically doing better. Now in these two country, let's say total eight people live and when we collected their income level, they were like this. And these are, by the way, thousand US dollars. So Nishit is earning 71,000 US dollar every year. And the average income level in Uganda is $62,000 a year. In Kranz, these numbers are these, but the mean is same. So the average income in both the countries is $62,000. Is that an indication that both countries are doing similar in terms of their economic performance. Well, if you look at the individual income level, you get a different picture. Here, the income levels are more or less the same. So see, 62 is an average, and most of the people's income are around 62, like plus and minus five or $10,000. But in Kranz, the income inequality is higher. The data points are very much far apart. So you can say that in Kranz, the variance is higher. In Uganda, the variance is lower. Now, you got an idea, okay, variance is higher or lower, but what is it? Is it 10, 50, 20? What is it? That has to be some number. So let me show you that number using Excel. So here, I have shown their income level. I will calculate the average income by using the average formula okay so that's the average income in juganda and kranz and now i will assign this a label number so see here what i have done is 
you can say juganda mean what that will do is let me explain so but first crans mean so i have given them a label okay in using this label you can refer to that cell so to calculate how far an income is from each other you can first measure how far individuals income is from the mean okay so let's say there is this data point so you can measure difference between mean and this so that you can calculate by saying okay individual income minus this mean and this means is juganda mean okay so individual income minus juganda mean so that's your difference and when you do this you get all these differences now one way of calculating variance that you can think about is okay you find out how far they are from mean and then sum them up but when you sum them up see you are getting zero why because there is negative number and there is positive number so negative and positive is cancelling out their effect so to tackle this problem you can maybe take absolute value so forget the negative sign you can just take absolute value but even if you take absolute value it will have some problems and i will discuss that problem in a minute or so but let's just use different approach which is you can square these numbers so when you square any number you get positive number as a result so you are cancelling out that negative effect okay so i am going to square this number this is how you square it so numbers are squared okay numbers are squared and then you can make a total of it so total of these squared numbers is this the count of these numbers how many numbers are there total it is this many and then when you divide this total by count you get variance so this is what variance is okay let me highlight so the variance for juganda income is 30 and when you do the same thing for this here okay crans mean when you do this and then the square i will i'll explain why we do square okay so just hold on and here when you do total it is the sum formula count is count once again this and the variance look at the variance here folks the variance is here is so huge it is 895 so when you are comparing these two numbers okay you get an idea on how far data points are so let's say someone comes to you and they don't give you all this information this simply make this statement that in juganda the average income level is 62000 dollar but variance is 30 whereas in clans average income level is 62000 dollar but the variance is 895 just by hearing this you can immediately say that in clans the income inequality is higher and the data points are far apart and there is lot of variance in the overall data set so now let me tell you why do we square it why don't we just use absolute value so i asked this question to chat gpt and it said three reasons number one is obvious you want to make every number positive number two is very important you want to penalize the difference so if the difference is higher you want to penalize it and the way you can penalize it is by squaring it so let's say you have a class in your school and let's say you go at 9 o'clock so 9 o'clock is a usual time but if you go at 9 and 5 you are 5 minute late so then teacher will punish you they will say make one round of our football ground that is your punishment but if you come at 9 10 you have to make five rounds So see, as five five minute increases, your penalty increases substantially. And if you come at nine fifteen, you have to make 
20 rounds. So 9, 5, just one round. 9, 10, 5 rounds. And 9, 15, 20 rounds. So as that deviation increases, you want to penalize it and you want to increase the effect. So that way you can get a better understanding of how far or how what is the spread in data points. Um, okay, and the third reason is calculus. So calculus works better with the square numbers. Uh, discussing calculus is beyond the scope of uh, this tutorial, but I think at, at some point in my YouTube channel, maybe I'll make a separate video on this, but in differential calculus, uh, it will help if you have the square. Okay, so that's the formula. And when you look at this formula, you know, you think, oh my God, this is so complex, but it's, it's not, right? See here, Xi is each data point. Each data point is what? 7162 extra. You are subtracting mean from that data point. That's what we did. We took the individual data point, subtracted the mean. Then we square that number. So this is the square. Then we divided it by N, which is C, which is the count. By the way, this is a sum, okay? This is the sum. So we summed it, then divided it, and that's when we got the variance. So the formula is clear. Now, the question is, what does 30 and 895 mean? Does it mean $895,000? Am I $895,000 apart from the average? No, that's not what it means. You square the number. So if you want to make any sense out of it, you have to scale it down. So what is the reverse of square? Tell me. Square root. Square root is the reverse of square. So if I do square root of this number, what I get is standard deviation. So standard deviation is nothing but that. Okay. So that is my standard deviation. So my standard deviation is 5.5 here and same way std dev p by p it means population okay population and mean okay i can just use a square root i'll show you the ready-made formula later on so the standard deviation here is 30 close to 30. so what this means is in crans on average person's income is 30,000 plus and minus from the mean. Whereas in Uganda, person's income is around $5,000 plus and minus. So that you can get some sense out of uh, this number if you use standard deviation. But for variance, it doesn't give you that, that kind of concrete information. So standard deviation is nothing but the square root of variance. And there are real life use cases of variance and standard deviation, which is stock market volatility. Let's say you want to invest in two stock, Tata Motors and Tesla. You want to actually invest in one stock, but you are trying to figure out which stock is better. You take last one month average of both of these stock and you find that both of these stocks were $100 on average. So now they are same. So does it mean I can invest in any stock? No, you have to look at the volatility in the stock. How much stock is stable? So let's say Tesla stock one day is 100, second day is 200, third day is 30, fourth day is 200. It's going up and down, up and down, up and down. So their instability or volatility is higher in Tesla stock. Okay. So it is short of like this. See, Tesla stock, just imagine it's $100 average, but one day it is this much, then it is this much, then it is this much, this much, this much. So although average price is same for Tesla and Tata Motors, you want to invest in Tata Motors because Tata Motors might be stable, right? Like 100, one day price is 100, then 102, 99, 104, etc. So variance is used in stock market. Variance is also can be used in, let's say you have a child and you want to admit them to a school. Now you have two schools, Delhi Public School and New York Public School. Which school I should, uh, you know, send my child to? Well, you can do similar analysis. So just forget this is income level, right? Let's say these are the scores of a student. So let's say you want to admit your student in 10th grade and you look at both the schools and their current 10th grade student performance. 
let's say in their current trend grade in a Delhi public school, let's say Nisit, we are all they are studying. These are their percentage score. Their average percentage score is 62. In New York public school, these guys are studying, but their average score is 62 percent. Both are same, but look at their individual scores. It is too volatile. Right, like say Mohan and Ahmed are getting higher score, maybe because individually they're good and their parents are taking good care of them. Maybe the school is not that great, you know, teachers are not that great. But in, in this case, if everyone is getting good marks, it means students are good, but then there is something that it tells about the teaching quality in that school. So you can make a decision by looking at the variance. So send your kid to a school which has a low variance. All right. So now in our uh, movies data set, we'll quickly calculate variance and standard deviation of IMDb rating and we'll use the ready-made Excel formula. So for variance, the formula is var dot P. So there is variance for the entire population, which means all the data points. There is variance for sample populace, which means only few data points. We are going to use all the data points. So movies, IMDb rating. So variance is 1.4. And then standard deviation, once again, for the entire population is movies. IMDb rating. Okay, so on average, my movie rating is 1.17 plus and minus. You will see from the movies itself, you can figure out. See, the ratings are kind of in a similar range between seven to nine. There is just one outlier, but otherwise, they are kind of similar. That's why the variance and standard deviation is lower. All right, that's all we had for this session. I will see you in the next lecture where we will discuss correlation. We will talk about correlation in this video. On the screen, I have an Excel file where I have shown the square foot of a property and the price. Now correlation tells you how related two variables are. So here is my data set and two variables are square fit and price. And you want to know how related they are. Now, using common sense, you can say they are closely related because as the square fit increases, the property price will increase. But let's approve this statistically using correlation formula. And by the way, this is a real data of Rajajinagar area in Bangalore that I have received from this makan.com website, which is a property website similar to Zillow in US. And I got few data points here and that's what I have here. And I'm going to now uh, plot a co-relation here. And the formula you can use is corel, where you specify both of your data point arrays. And it tells you there is an 86% correlation. If the correlation is one, it means they are very closely related. So the range is, I think, negative one to one. Zero means they are not related at all and negative one means they are negatively related. We will look at negative correlation in detail, but here it clearly shows 0.86, which is very close to one, which means these two variables square fit and price are very much related. And if you plot a scatter plot by going into insert, click in this, you will find that they are correlated using a linear equation. So if you insert a straight line here, see it will look something like this, where the data points are mostly around that straight line. So if there is a line and the data points are around that, it means they are related. So on the x-axis we have the square foot, y-axis we have the price, and this shows positive correlation where Positive correlation means if one variable increases, the other variable increases as well uh, in the same direction. And if one variable decreases, of course, the other variable decreases. Let's talk about circle area where I have the radius of a circle. And you know the formula uh, of the circle's area, which is pi r square. So pi is 22 by 7 into r square, mean, meaning phi into phi. Okay. Now tell me what will be the correlation between radius and area. If you use common sense, it is pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's show this. So correlation between this comma 
this close to 1. Isn't it a common sense? As the circle of the radius increases, the area will increase as well. Let's look at health data now, where I have people's height in centimeter and their fasting blood sugar level. Now tell me, is there any correlation between people's height and their sugar level, whether they will have diabetes or not? Is it dependent on height? No, correct? Height and the diabetes health level has no relation, almost no relation. There could be some relation. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but common sense says no. I mean, if you're getting diabetes or not, it is dependent on your genetics, your eating habits, uh, your exercise, etc. So let's see. So I'm going to use correlation here between this comma this and you find is this point two? There'll be some correlation, obviously. But see, it's very uh, like like far away from one and it is close to closer to zero, which means these two variables are not related. And if you plot a scatter plot of the same thing here, you will find that data points are all over the place. See, there is no like linear equation that you can draw from here. The other example I want to use is employee happiness. Now tell me, what is the correlation between commute time and the employee happiness? The common sense says that if the person is commuting longer hours, let's say this person is commuting two hours one way, 120 minutes is two hours. One way he goes two hours, then he works and then he comes back two hours again, he or she. Their happiness index is lower. This is out of 10. So two out of 10 means employee is not happy. The happiness as such depends on other factors as well, such as salary, what kind of work you are doing, you know, your relationship with your manager and your colleagues, etc. But just to keep things simple, let's say your happiness depends only on commute. It's very clear. See, this person is having zero commute, which means he's working from home and their happiness index is very high. Nine out of ten. This person is working. Ten minutes, her happiness index is eight out of ten. Sixty, four out of ten. Let's plot a correlation here between the two. Do you have any guess what will be the output? Pause the video and make a guess. Negative, close to negative one. Okay, so if you plot this here, yeah, once again, I'm gonna plot a scatter plot. See, here you can almost draw a line, straight line, I would say, and that data points are around that line only. So that means uh, there is a correlation, but it's a, a negative correlation. And then there are types of correlations such as strong positive correlation, strong negative correlation. You can just Google and read about uh, them. Uh, in real life, the correlations can be helpful in a lot of scenarios, uh, such as investment. Let's say you want to invest 100 rupees how should you invest and you don't want to take bigger risk so then you need to keep a balance between let's say stocks and gold because stocks and gold seem to have a negative correlation so usually if stocks are going up more people put money in stocks and the gold price goes down so if you go to any financial advisor they will say let's hedge it hedge meaning uh, you want to you know put your money in a balanced way in both these assets. So when the stock market is down, gold my prices will be up. And when stock market is up, gold price is down. So overall your portfolio will still perform. So this is a very balanced portfolio. If you want to take risk, invest 100% in stock. If you don't want to take any risk, then invest 100% in gold and other, uh, let's say cash and bonds, things like that. It is called the debt instrument. So when you look at your portfolio, if you are not a big risk taker, if you believe in a steady return, you need to have negative correlation within the assets in your portfolio. That is one use case. There are many other use cases as well. All right. So that was about correlation. We covered few statistics topics uh, in this particular chapter. And as, as I have said before, learning is a continuous process and you can never say I have learned data analysis or data scientist skills. You have to have this student mindset and always whenever you're facing any new topic, you know, take your time, 
put a pause on your work and then do some reading, uh, read statistics, try it out in Excel, Python, etc. and keep on improving your skills. Thank you.